you're a little nervous about encountering a crate this early in the game, but you get to jump on it. Attack with your pasta spoon. How's it going everyone? My name's Graham, and welcome to the Kingdom of Loathing, a precursor to West of Loathing, one of the most popular series on this channel. It ran for 47, like, half-hour-long episodes. Really awesome, really hilarious game. And I knew that it came from Kingdom of Loathing because I had I'd played this game back in junior high school, sometime like that, years and years ago. Had mostly forgotten about it until the whole resurgence of popularity of West of Loathing. It was so fun putting that series back together, and it really reminded me how funny the original game here was. It seems that the general consensus is that Kingdom of Loathing isn't as well set up for a Let's Play because it's all browser and text-based, there's no physical game that you're walking around in or anything like that. But if you ask me, the real appeal of West of Loathing was the humor to begin with, so I think this might still work out. I'm doing a bit of a trial here, we'll have to see what the reception is like. It could be a fun recurring thing. We have our different class options here, the Seal Clubber, Turtle Tamer, Pastamancer, Saucerer, Disco Bandit, and Accordion Thief. Equally as absurd as the West of Loathing classes, I remember my old character being a Pastamancer, so I think that's what I want to go with. I'm going to be Carl Dancer. Name available, how about that? I kind of didn't think to test that. I picked Dancer, said his name rhymes with Pastamancer, and then it would just be funny for people to call him Mr. Dancer. And also, so his initials are KD, tying back into Pasta there. I got a whole thing going on here, a whole theme. Description, with his mastery of the arcane secrets of noodle craft, the Pastamancer is a force to be reckoned with. He relies on his mysticality to get ahead in the world. Oh, so I think this game still uses muscle moxie and mysticality. It totally does. I thought that that was original to West of Loathing. Goes to show how long it's been since I've actually played this. Playstyle, Pastamancers, which how many people are going to rag on me for saying pasta the Canadian way rather than pasta? Pasta monsters. No, he's a Pastamancer. Casts powerful spells while hiding behind their enthralled undead Pasta minions. I did not remember that this guy had Pasta minions. That's hilarious. Yes, I want that. I think this is a wise choice. I don't even need to read the other ones. Play. So there's continuously updates and stuff going on with this game, which is pretty ridiculous. Like, just a few days ago here. It's the 7th right now. November's item of the month, the Pantagram, is now in Mr. Store. Go summon yourself some pants list of trivial updates, things like that, but mostly we're going to want to keep track of Carl over here, our inventory, map, and all the different things going on here. You'll just have to pretend there's a physical character walking around. Are there the moons? There's two different moons in this world? Ronald Half Waxing and Grimace Waxing Crescent. Are these both named after McDonald's characters for some reason? We're going to the big mountains first off, I guess that's just where the adventure starts. Mount Noob seems like a good place to start to me. The Toot Oriole. Oh, he just looks, he looks cute. He's a cute little tutor sitting on the top of his little mountain there. The bird speaks to you as you approach. Welcome adventurer. I'm sure he, a welcome adventurer. I'm sure little Tooty has a deep masculine voice like that. I'm the Toot Oriole and I'd like to show you the ropes. Here they are. He points to a pile of ropes piled atop a nearby, a nearby rock. Now that's out of the way, let's get down to brass tacks. Tacks? Instead of... Wait a fucking second. No way. I've maybe used that phrase like once in my entire life. I have always said brass tacks. I don't know. I thought you were just... There, there was some sort of brass tax that people had to pay in. When you're getting down to brass tax, it's, you know, you've already been taxed on, on your income, your house, your marriage. I don't know what all gets taxed. And then when it comes down to it, they slowly work its way down to the smallest possible thing. We're taxing your brass. It means you're getting down to the nitty gritty. That's how I always in interpreted it. I had no idea. Just a little bit of learning on the side there. For anyone who saw West of Loathing, all this is going to be very familiar. If you didn't, then I promise you it won't be that hard to figure out. 
The campsite, though, I don't know what that's about, so I'll look at that. Just west of the big mountains, there's a campsite for adventurers. You get assigned a spot as soon as you arrive in the kingdom, and that's where you'll be staying. It's pretty Spartan at the moment. Here, take this tent. Oh, the newbie sport tent. I didn't realize I was going to get an item. Maybe I need to look at all the tutorial stuff after all. Oh, look at that. It opens things up in a little pop-up for you. This is a basic tent. It's durable and waterproof, and if you put it up at your campsite, you'll recover additional HP and MP when you rest. Useful. Recent items, tent. Yeah, I want to use that. Let's uh, let's load that up. Oh, I can head, head to the campsite now. Now the campground's there in addition to the big mountains. Rest in my tent, my colossal closet, my quest log, and my kitchen, which is just a picnic blanket. You gain 8 HP and 10 mana points. I was already full of everything, I think. Teach me about my inventory. I guess I'm going to be reading up on everything for the sake of gaining additional equipment and all that. It's dangerous to go alone into the big scary world out there and nothing keeps an adventurer company as well as some sweet gear. Let's see what I've got lying around Might that might fit you. Oriole digs around in a pile of junk behind his rock and produces a couple items. The pasta spoon and the old sweatpants. This is a pasta spoon, weapon of choice of the pasta mancers. While similar to the rasta spoon, the pasta spoon is used for making noodle magic rather than summoning reggae music. <laughs> hey, and it's a meat smithing component. And the old sweatpants, because you can't enjoy pasta without some nice sweaty pants to lie around in. This is a pair of faded gray sweatpants with an elastic drawstring. Most people don't actually break a sweat while wearing them, but sitting on a couch eating potato chips pants doesn't have quite as much of a ring to it. Go ahead and equip the spoon and the sweatpants. Ooh, certificate of participation. This certificate proclaims that you are a legitimate participant in the adventuring community of the Kingdom of Loathing. Hang it proudly at your campsite. I think I shall. You proudly hang it at your campsite. Adventuring. Over to the left side, underneath the little hourglass icon, you can see the number of adventures you have left. 199. I have a set number. Adventures are used for adventuring. Every night you will get an additional 40 adventures. Oh, weird. It's a weird system to have a, a limit put on things. But I guess otherwise you could grind through the events and stuff, and they don't want people to do that too much. There's a cave at the base of the mountain. Here, let me mark it on your map. Noob Cave at Mount Noob in the Big Mountains. Okay, the number that I had next to my campsite, and that is going to be near other things, is showing how much adventure it will cost. Uh, go to the Noob Cave and smash some crates. Don't mind if I do, you're fighting a crate. You're a little nervous about encountering a crate this early in the game, but you get to jump on it. Attack with your pasta spoon. You kick your opponent up three notches. Bam, boof, zot! New attack damage record! Whoa, look at me go. You win the fight. The crate was empty, fueled by disappointment and boredom. You pick up some of the splinters of wood and whittle them into popsicle sticks. You now have three popsicle sticks. This is a run-of-the-mill popsicle stick. It's not one of the cool ones with a joke written on it, but it's also not one of the gross ones with sticky popsicle residue and somebody else had spit on it. So I guess you should count your blessings. And I gain two magicalness? I don't really know how that works. Oh, maybe gaining magicalness means I'm leveling up my mysticality. I have skills, manicotti, meditation, and spaghetti spear. Ooh. Last adventure, noob cave. Let's head back there, fight another crate. Socko, barf! This crate was full of fruit. You pocket some of it, trying not to think about how long it's been sitting down here. I got the lemon. This is a lemon. It's shaped exactly like a lemon. And an orange. This is an orange. It's orange. It's a cooking ingredient and a cocktailing ingredient, and it's crappy food. The lemon was also a cocktailing ingredient. Let's fight one more crate. I don't want to spend too many adventures down on the noob cave. You use your pasta spoon to give it a spoonful of sugar to help the medicine go down. And by medicine, I mean whoop ass, which does three damage. Wham, barf, you win the fight. The crate was full of vodka, and the reason you know that is because your shoes are now full of vodka as well. You managed to salvage one intact bottle from the moist and fragrant wreckage. You acquired the bottle of vodka. This is a tiny airline-sized bottle of vodka. The orcish frat boys must have gotten this from some other dimension. 
Oh, you know what? One more of those and I'll level up my mysticality, so I better beat on one more crate. The crate was empty, I got a bunch of popsicle sticks. You gain one mysteriousness, which is uh, what seems to be leveling up Moxie now. Gain one mysticality point and you gain one roguishness. Which I don't see anywhere in any of my uh, abilities or stats or anything like that. Don't really know how the roguish, roguish niche comes into play. Teach me about my skills. Oh yeah, I would like to be able to use some of those. Skills are important, and there are two different kinds of them. Some can be used during fights, and others can be used not during fights. Let's investigate the second kind first. Click on the spell icon and use Manicotti Meditation. By meditating on your Manicotti Mandala, using your Manicotti Mantra, perhaps, you can achieve oneness with the pasta, which makes up the underlying structure of reality. Your magicalness will increase for a period of time. It gives effect pasta oneness. <laughs> and that, uh, what is the cost of using that? You meditate, magicalness courses through your veins, pasta oneness... You feel at one with the forces of the pastiverse. Your fingers pulse with magicalness, extra mysticality. I don't know what the cost was to use that. I don't seem to have like mana or anything. Oh, one one MP. Never mind. Yes, 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 yes. It, it, it uh, uses MP. The funny thing is that it actually raises my maximum possible MP. And spaghetti spear. This spell conjures a fast-moving dart of spaghetti and slings it at your enemy, dealing a small amount of damage. Uncooked spaghetti, that is. Cooked, cooked spaghetti wouldn't do much damage, now would it? You can just picture it kind of like flying in a nice straight noodle arrow, but then kind of just mushing and curling up against someone's chest in like a, a slimy little coil. Results? W am I done? Did you teach me everything that you wanted to? Well done! As I'm sure you noticed, the spell gave you an effect that makes you more powerful. You can see how long the effect will last in the character pane. Over on the left. So four, four more adventures is how long it'll last for? I, I think that either means it's raised by four... I think that means four more adventures. Now it's time for you to learn about combat skills. I've marked the Dire Warren on your map. Sounds a little bit scarier than a noob cave. It's a dangerous place, so you'll need every ounce of guile, which is worth a pound of Chun-Li you can muster if you're going to survive. I'm very confused by whatever reference that might be. Head down there and use Spaghetti Spear on three different enemies. You're fighting a fluffy bunny? This is one of the cute fluffy bunnies that populate the Dire Warren. You're not entirely sure why it's called the Dire Warren, as you can't imagine any particularly dire circumstances or dire straits coming about because of these little things. It's probably just the cutest little critter of all time. I don't really know why I'm going for it here. Nonetheless, it's probably safer to destroy it. You get the jump on it. I'm going to use my skill. The Spaghetti Spear requires zero mana points. Ooh, well, that's just groovy. Oh god, <laughs> I earned my first meat, which is the currency in this game, by the way. Uh, you just you just harvest it straight off of that fluffy little bunny. Maybe I should keep my gruesome like orc meat and my fluffy bunny meat in different piles. It just feels wrong to start mixing them together in my wallet, you know? It's like having American and Canadian dollars. You don't, you don't, if you have, happen to have some of both, you don't mix them up. You, you separate them, you keep them divided. I want my cute meat kept somewhere separate. And also my bunny liver. This is the liver from a fluffy bunny. It's totally pristine and healthy looking. This bunny must not have been much of a drinker. I should certainly hope not. I gain strongness. Strongness for beating on a poor defenseless bunny. I'm sorry, Mr. Bunny. Hey, the, the four didn't go down, so that might be how much my mysticality is being raised by. I won't pretend to understand. I'm just going to go ahead. It looks like it, it stays set to whatever my last skill usage was. New spell damage record. Ooh, good for me. Extra wizardliness. And yeah, right here. See, you can see that it keeps that queued up for me, which is nice. It gets the jump on me. The bunny absent-mindedly chews on some grass. You attempt to do the same thing, but accidentally bite your tongue. <laughs> this poor fluffy bunny wasn't even trying to attack me. I'm just here beating myself up. Lose one HP. Well, how dare you, bunny. How dare you set that example that led to my own demise. You deserve to be spaghetti-speared. 
extra enchantedness. All right, go back to Mount Noob. The Oriole will be impressed with me, the Toot Oriole. Nicely done, adventurer. You probably noticed that in addition to gaining stat points by fighting those fearsome bunnies, you are also gaining meat. Meat is the currency of loathing. You'll want as much of it as you can get because you'll use it to buy new skills and new equipment and things. In fact, here, take a little of mine to help you get started. You acquire the nest egg. <laughs> this is an egg that the Toot Oriole gave you. He said something about it being full of meat. Type usable. Maybe I can just crack it open and it's full of meat. That's really messed up though because that means there's like a, a bird fetus in there. It's like a fertilized egg. It's really messed up Toot Oriole because it's probably your child. One of the only remaining things left for you to teach me is about cooking, and I don't really want to cook the egg you just gave me either. That seems a little irreverent, wouldn't you say? I'll just use it. You crack open the egg, turns out it's full of meat. I don't want you to describe the meat in any particular way, just the fact that it has meat, that's fine, we'll just move on from there. When did I get a ravioli hat? This is a hat fashioned from an oversized ravioli, or maybe raviolis. <laughs> we were never sure about that one. Cool, extra spell damage. Put that on. You're getting nice and loaded there, Mr. KD. I have to be careful to really enunciate KD so people don't think I'm calling my character like Katie or something. Like a, like a, like a lady's name. Teach me about cooking, Toot Oriole. You're a growing adventurer, and it's important that you eat to keep up your strength. In fact, eating is one of the best ways for you to get more adventures. If you're going to eat, you're going to need to learn how to cook. Take this oven and use it from your inventory to install it at your campsite. The Easy Cook Oven. This is an easy cook oven powered by a mystical but low wattage light bulb. An amateur baker is you. Oh, we got a, a crafting menu up top here. I will, I will install the oven. There's a nice quick way for me to do that, which is very handy. You install the oven in the stylish outdoor kitchen. The toot oriole flies down and lands on a rock next to you. You will find a lot of food as you adventure, but nothing beats the taste of a home-cooked meal. Here, take these ingredients. The strawberry I haven't read about yet. This is a plump, juicy strawberry. Jumpin' plucy. That's a plumpin' juicy. What the hell are you saying? <laughs> I'm very lost. It's just a little too fired up about strawberries. Just couldn't even form proper sentences, hey? Click on the crafting icon to access the crafting and all that and see if you can't figure out something to make with these ingredients. Oh, man. I just get to wing it? That's kind of fun, actually. I I wouldn't... I, I like that. I like that more than getting recipes a little bit. But I hope that if I do something like this and it works, that then I'll know the recipe. So, so like, if I were to make it now, if it is successful then in the future when I select popsicle stick and lemon that it has a little thing telling me this will create the lemon popsicle or whatever so try and bake it yeah the lemon popsicle I called that <laughs> I mean there, there wasn't much else that it was gonna turn into so I'd say I called it as if that was some great accomplishment it's to be expected really if life gives you lemons and you live in a freezer make this oh it's decent food rather than just the crappy food that I've had in the past. Say, that looks delicious. You should go to your inventory, click the thing, and eat it. And you discovered a new recipe. What does the word discovered mean? Oh, cool. This is more or less what I wanted, actually. This is this is almost, this is probably more useful than I wanted, because rather than me having to select the ingredients and then reminding myself whether it's an actual thing, this is just all my recipes. It shows what it takes and how many of them I have, so that's actually more useful than what I was saying. That's awesome. What else could I cook? What if I threw, like, a lemon and an orange in something together? Oh, cool. So I can experiment without them being wasted, which is useful. What if you make a lemon liver? What if you make a popsicle stick liver? You got a liver popsicle. <laughs> this is a delightful confection of a frozen liver on a stick, provided you have a condition that causes you to confuse disgust with delight. Yeah, it's a little messed up. I'm a little, uh, it's a little bit of a weird one. We'll just make it, we'll make a couple more popsicles here. Some fruit ones this time. This is a delicious looking orange popsicle. Compared to an apple popsicle, it's a horse of a different color. <laughs> <laughs> and last of all, we'll, we'll make a strawberry one, too. I kind of just assumed it would be. It would be weird if it wasn't uh, an option. This is a delicious strawberry popsicle. Eating this, like living, is easy with eyes closed. 
It's just saying life is hard. Just grit and bear it with your eyes closed. <laughs> Probably nothing that existential. Oh right, it wanted me to eat one of these. Uh, do I not know? I don't really know if I know what they do right now. I will eat an orange popsicle, I suppose. You eat the popsicle and orange you glad you did. You gain two adventures. Oh, is that all I get from it? That's not even not even like a boost or anything. The way food and alcohol and stuff worked in West of Loathing, you have to be really careful about what you used and when and everything like that. I was a little bit worried that, you know, I'd be really tied to that choice. Turns out it's not really a big deal. And teach me about cocktail crafting, because getting drunk is very important to the Kingdom of Loathing. Adventurers do not live by bread alone. Not even really by bread at all, mostly by meat. Booze is also a crucial part of your daily diet. It's like my dear old mum used to say, it's a rough world out there, toot. Now be a deer and fetch me another drink. <laughs> You'll need this, my first shaker. Isn't that wonderful? This is a colorful, cheap plastic cocktail shaker, useful for making not-so-potent potables. I don't care if it's plastic and cheap as long as it can whip up some booze for me. Let's, uh, let's use this and install it in our kitchen. You install the cocktail crafting kit in your stylish outdoor kitchen. Not really sure what it took to install. Pretty much just pulling it out of my backpack and throwing it on the blanket, I think. Making it even more stylish. The tutorial flies down. Cocktails are a fine way to make yourself less sober. Here, take these ingredients. Grapefruit, olive, lemon, bottle of whiskey, vodka, gin. What does it say? I have to say about most of these? Grapefruit. This is a grapefruit. It's a healthy part of a balanced breakfast, provided your bowl of cereal is about as heavy as a grapefruit. <laughs> okay, to have a balanced breakfast, right? You put them on either end of a scale, want to make sure that that evens out. I personally dislike olives. I don't want to put them in my drinks, only if it's strictly advantageous adventuring-wise. Otherwise, I'm not doing it. This is a big, plump, juicy green olive. Few things are as similar to a big, plump, juicy green olive as this. I mean, they're a pretty unique thing, and not, not necessarily because they're a good thing. This is an airline-sized bottle of whiskey. It's only wrong when the woman is right. Mmm, whiskey. And gin I haven't seen before. Airline-sized bottle yet again. The orcish frat boys must have gotten this from some other dimension. Isn't that what they said about the vodka as well? The vodka and the gin. Weird. It says the same thing about both of them. Bit of lazy writing, wouldn't you guys say? I like gin drinks. I would like to make gin and grapefruit. That sounds delicious. I got a salty dog. This is a delicious glass of gin and juice with salt around the rim. Do you really want salt with bitter gin and bitter grapefruit? You kind of probably want something sweet. And it said to go give it a drink. Might as well down the hatch. You drink the gin and juice that puts your mind on your meat and your meat on your mind. You gain six adventures. You also gain nine enchantedness. You gain mystical point and you gain a level. You gain three drunkenness. That was a whole lot of things that I just gained. I don't know what a lot of it's for actually. Where does it keep track of drunkenness? Three, just a little bit drunk. I got favorite foods and everything. I have no idea what the point of drunkenness is. Level 2, I'm just a yeast scholar right now. I didn't see what I was at level 1. Well, I better go visit the Oriole one more time. He'll probably tell me I'm all done. I've learned everything. Just like the real world, booze is a great way to get extra adventures. <laughs> just be careful not to overdo it, or you might knock yourself out of commission for the rest of the day. Ah, there you go. If you're trying to jack up your adventures too much, which seems to cap out at 200 by drinking a bunch of booze, you'll pass out can't do any more for the day. You've learned everything I have to teach you. Now it's time for you to set out on your own and find your fortune in the kingdom. Might I suggest starting with the Council of Loathing over in the seaside town? Here, I'll mark the town on your map. Let's go back to the big map. Oh, look at all this other stuff here. We got a uh, community and a donation spot. What's the community have to say? Podcast, Twitter feed, forum, Reddit, Facebook, the Store of Loathing, Cold Front, an unofficial fan site, and the radio? Messages, don't really have any of those that I got, I got nothing to worry about there. Back on the main site here, today is St. Sneaky Pete's Day, drink, drink, drink. 
This holiday is for the remembrance of Sneaky Pete, the redundantly sneaky, one of three archetypal elders who shaped the kingdom into what it is today. Whether or not we should thank them for it is still up for grabs. On this day, everyone gathers in bars to swap stories about the sneaky, underhanded tricks they've pulled on people while drinking copious amounts of green beer. The parties are generally quite memorable, or at least they would be if anyone were able to remember them. The green beer is pretty nasty, but it's ex expeditious, and it's said that Sneaky Pete himself invented the recipe, which, all things considered, might have been his final enduring prank. Oh, and few people know this, but Sneaky Pete's not a saint. The saint in the holiday name stands for street. <laughs> Wait, so it's street Sneaky Pete's day? Well, I'd go get drunk in the bars, but I haven't really made it very far into the game. There's not a whole lot I can see. Maybe there's a bar here I can go to? The Odd Jobs Board, the museum, wrong side of the tracks, right side of the tracks, Council of Loathing, with an adventurer signal, <laughs> and the Clan District Market Square. No bars I can go get wasted at right now. There's the basic introduction to this game here. I more than likely will come back and do one more episode at least just to kind of show off some of the actual game itself, get some feedback from the community, from people watching, get a general sense of what the interest is here. So you're not going to see me walking around in a map and everything, but there's still going to be so, so much to see, so many funny enemies, items with goofy descriptions, all that stuff that people really loved about West of Loathing, just kind of presented in a different package, so I think you guys will really enjoy it. I would like to play more of it, I would like to show off some more of it, so let me know what you think, I'd like to hear from you guys. Thank you all so much for watching, and me and KD here will see you again soon.